All right, so um, has Elmer spoken about spiritual gifts in this class before? No? Okay, because we're doing spiritual gifts in the main congregation, um, but then he also wanted to go over uh, spiritual gifts in this class as well. So, um, does anyone here not know what a spiritual gift is? Anyone here not know what a spiritual gift is? Um, like Jesse, give me an example of a spiritual gift that you know of. Um, evangelist. Evangelist. Serving. Prophet. Um, okay, that's fine. How about you, Jesse? Spiritual um, gifts that you know of. Well, a few ones we went through were discernment. Discernment. That was the first one. Okay. And last week's was uh, faith. Faith. Okay. Faith. All right, Marilyn. Mm. From the list? <laughs> yeah, just up, or any that you know of. Spiritual gifts. Administration. Okay, administration, yeah. Okay, so it sounds like we all know what spiritual gifts are. Um, now, I didn't know, I don't know if you wanted me to go through all these verses that he is, because there's a bunch of uh, reading, so uh, maybe we'll just read those if we need to refer back to them. Okay, so uh, how many of you here are baptized? Okay, except for Elmer. David, are you baptized? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Josh, yeah, everybody. So, okay. So I guess with the exception of Elmer, um, this next one, right, you're going to have to, this next question is directly to you. Okay, I'm going to go one by one. <laughs> so, Marilyn, what is your spiritual gift? Oh, <coughs> I'm going to take names, I'm going to take notes. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't know. You don't know what your spiritual gift is, okay? See, that's good to know. That's good to know. Actually, I will make notes. <laughs> no, because, yeah, we want to get real with this stuff. This is, um... Can you write them on the board? <laughs> want me to write them on the board? Yeah. So I'll that we can I'll actually I'll think about it. I'll write them while you're, while you're okay. asking. Yeah. Okay, and it's okay not to know. I mean, that's why, we, that's why we're doing this, because we want Meta to know, we want Meta to find out, and she, um, I'm sure she'd like to find out, because she wants to serve. Jesse. What's your spiritual gift? Um, I think I have multiple. Okay. Um, evangelist is my top one. Okay. And um, serving. Okay. Mm -hmm. A bit of discernment. Okay. Mm -hmm. is, yeah. Isn't faith one too? Faith, yes. Faith is a gift, yeah. uh, but everybody has faith. Um, but it's a special kind of faith. Do you think that you have that kind of faith? I'll yeah. put it down. Yeah. Okay. Uh, JC. <coughs> um, I think definitely um, discernment is one, although it's a bit, um, some people may say radical, because um, what they don't see, I can see, and they don't, just, they're just not. Okay. They just have no awareness of it, or they think it's okay, and I'm just like, uh, no. You're just crazy. It, 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 yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it, I, like inside me, I know that that's not of God. Okay. But nevertheless, you know, it depends on the person. But to me, sometimes things don't—they're definitely not of God. And okay. I can just tell, but you know. Okay. So discernment. And and I think that uh, faith also is a good one because, I mean. I think just these past few weeks were a test of that faith, of like, um, really uh, not giving up and not losing my cool, because um, inside me there's always like a default kind of thing, where it's like, doesn't matter what happens, God's still in control, and that's just the kind of faith that I have, and it doesn't matter what, what happens, really, like, it doesn't matter. Okay, okay. <coughs> All right, good. Discernment, faith, any others you think you might have? Uh, 
And when it talks about interpretation of tongues, does that literally mean like knowing many languages? <laughs> yeah, it does. Because I, I can understand like five different languages. Do you really? Yeah. But you knew that before you were Christian? Uh, yeah. Okay, so... That's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Which five languages, by the way? Huh? Well, it's French, uh, English, Spanish, uh, Korean, and a little bit of Portuguese. Wow, Korean. Yeah. That's when I was doing my meditation stuff. So. Ah. Okay. So How do you train Libby? <laughs> she speaks Korean. She's, she's from she's, Korea. She's Korean. Who said you train her? All right, Stephen. What do you think your spiritual gift is? Evangelism. Evangelism. Okay. Anything else comes to mind? No. Okay. Um, all right, David. Uh, no. Okay. And then Josh. Uh, definitely um, serving, giving. Mm. And that's it. Okay. And okay, now I've I've heard this, and I don't know how much. Um, I really haven't looked into how much validity there is into it, but uh, some people believe that the list that Paul gives in Scripture isn't exhaustive. Like, he's just giving examples of, and he gives as many examples as he can. But there could be more. So, you know, if anything comes to mind that it's not on that list, uh, you know, just say it. And we can, you know, we can look into it. So, serving, giving, um, David? I'm not sure. Okay. Would, would compassion be one? To have compassion for others? Is that mercy? Uh, the gift of uh, compassion. That's more of a, I guess, an attitude uh, versus a function. Yeah. But being compassionate would, um, I would think, yeah, probably <laughs> under mercy or giving, you know. Uh, so I would definitely serving, maybe. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so... He's got Elmer. He's not baptized. Oh. Yeah, this is... Here's a, here's a point. And I, and I don't know that whether I almost made this point before. Is that um, those who are born again are given spiritual gifts and if you are not baptized a baptism is supposed to be a, an outward sign of what you know has happened inside of you already so people that are born again they they just like wow I think God has changed my heart I think I know now that this is real and that person will get baptized if you don't get baptized it's because probably you feel like God hasn't really done anything in your heart yet and maybe you're right you know and that's that is a valid position but if you know that then you need to do something you, you know that should prompt you to do something to ask God you know save me you know change my heart you know and that's how it begins by starting to plead to God realizing you're a sinner and that you need a new heart and it all goes from there so that's why uh, I'm only asking those who are baptized because those who are baptized I'm assuming that you guys know that you've been born again that you've been given a new heart, right? And that now you know that you are a body in the body of Christ and that, you know, this is, this is a new life that you're beginning. You know, you, your, your outlook has changed completely. And, and you, it's almost like you know that you're on a mission. And the mission is to glorify God, to bring people to Christ, to, to do what you can for this local church body. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm not trying to, like, just, uh, skip Elmer because, you know, he beats me a class for hour or anything. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to those that do not know, do you think you have any idea what it might be? Any, like, has anything ever crossed your mind about 
what your spiritual gift might be. Anything, you know, as you're, as you're studying your Bible, as you're meditating, when you pray, anything ever popped up for you? For the ones that don't know. Or how about this? Any of the gifts that you would love to have? Any, any one of them appeal to you? You want us to answer? Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, well, I figure, like, administration, is that, like, keeping things organized? Like, administrating? The secretary. Yeah, kind of like, is that, like, a secretary? Like, is that what administration means? Administ yes, it means to, it's like an operational thing. You just, you, you, you're really good at helping things get done. You know what I mean? Like, uh, coordinating. coordinating mm -hmm. Give a task to people. You know, remembering <laughs> tasks. Yes, I have that. Okay. Could administration be something you already have before? Um, yes, it could. Pretty good yeah, and, and I know uh, this is, you know, um, and, and this is one of the things that we definitely need to um, really look into as far as the, the differences between the world, ta worldly talents, and spiritual gifts, because administration is listed as a spiritual gift, but it has to differ in some way than yeah, just a really I'm good, asking. yeah, a really good executive assistant, mm -hmm. you know, in a, co in a corporation. Because then one might think, oh, she has a spiritual gift of administration, but I don't think that's what Paul meant. I, and it also has to do with the way that a church functions is so different than what a corporation, you know. There's uh, a church operates by the spirit. And so it's just, it's a different dynamic, you know. But it's a good question. So you don't believe in, um, like, having a gift beforehand? So, uh, uh, like, like no, example, that's... It's like... It's like all these musicians, super talented. Yeah. Some of them have a gift. Right. You gotta yeah. believe it. Talent. Are, are they using that gift wrong? Yeah, so so are those gifts spiritual gifts? If I say they are spiritual gifts, then I am saying they are full of the Holy Spirit. Uh, but then that would be a contradiction because their life is just unbelieving, worldly, you know, whatever. So... Whatever gifts they may have, sure, they're from God, obviously. Because everybody, you know, God is merciful to the just and the unjust. He, he has given um, people that are unbelievers gifts, you know. Uh, but they're not the spiritual gifts. They're not the gifts that you get from the Holy Spirit once you've been born again. So it's different. So playing an instrument is not a spiritual <laughs> yeah, it's not. No. Boy, that's talent. That's some talent. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't know, Josh. Do you would you would you disagree with that, uh, no. or would you have a different take on that? No. Okay. But I just call it a gift. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's a gift. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, all right. Let's see. Who else didn't know? David, any any one of these that you would love to have or that appeals to you? I can't even see that. <laughs> 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 I'm sending you it right Is now. there a gift of sight? <laughs> 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 they want that. <laughs> okay, there's healing, interpretation of tongues, uh, knowledge, leadership, mercy, miracles, uh, pastor or shepherd, prophecy, serving, uh, ministering, teaching, tongues, wisdom, Administration, apostles, <coughs> apostleship, discernment, <clears throat> evangelism, exhortation is like uh, encouraging people, uh, faith, and giving. Any of, any of those appeal to you, or you kind of say, you know what, I, I wish I, w I had that gift. All of them, more than one. How the serving? Serving. How serving would be one. Okay. And then the other David. I was gonna say that as well. <laughs> serving and giving. Okay. Can we say which ones we want? 
Yeah. Shoot, if I can talk in tongues, that would be awesome. Okay. <laughs> and healing, that would be awesome. Uh huh. Okay. Through your base as well. All right, good. Okay. All right, so now uh, some of us have. Um, actually, I forgot to include Robert here. And myself on the side. You just got your test back. back. <laughs> uh, you know, also, guys, on the top, I wrote the website. There's a, uh, you can take a free test. Um, and it kind of just gives you, it's not, of course, it's not bulletproof, but it just kind of helps you see where you're at. Uh, it says spiritualgifttest.com. <coughs> spiritualgifttest.com. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot of questions, but it, uh, I think it's pretty, pretty accurate. It kind of helps you. Okay. How many questions was it? Uh, I don't want to tell you. I, I is it like 20 <laughs> minutes? <laughs> no. It's going to be like five score. minutes. Are you allowed to quit? I was like at 30, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. You just go through quick. Don't think about it. Just hit them. Uh-huh. Uh, so, Robert, what's your spiritual gift? Um, still working on it. What? You got three of them. Yeah. Well, I don't trust that system. He, got, like, oh, okay. he had mercy, teaching. Mercy, yeah. Uh, leadership. Let me see what he had. He had leadership too. You know what? I, I think on all these, some, I think that some people tend to see it before you do. Other people. Oh yeah, that's very true. And I think that's uh, you know just with us being close to each other that we kind of we identify. Can, we can <laughs> identify maybe before you because I know that uh -huh. people over the years have have. Told me things mm -hmm. that I know, I, you know, because I don't really think very much. Yeah. You know, so some of us don't think much of ourselves, but other people can see it, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and they'll tell you, "Hey, you know, you got it." Or, you know, uh huh. So that's okay. Very encouraging. Okay. Uh, for myself, I believe teaching is my spiritual gift. Um, see that one, we all know. <laughs> very clear. Uh, okay, so. So to those that identified their gift, have you been using your gift to its fullest potential? That's a hard one. If not, why not? So uh, Jesse thought his uh, spiritual gift was evangelist, serving, discernment, faith. I don't know. I don't know that this is a fair question. Who's gonna say, "Oh yeah, I've been using my gift to its full potential"? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was yeah. about to tell you. No, I don't think so. Yeah. I think there's always room for more. There's yeah, there's always. Gonna, up. There's never gonna be a cap. Uh huh. There's not never gonna be a ceiling. Yep. So you can <clears throat> always do more. Yep. That's correct. You want a pin? <laughs> Uh, there might be one here. Let's see how this one's showing through. Um, so maybe I'll just rephrase this. Not really its full potential, because yes, we all agree that there's always going to be room for growth. Um, but um, do you feel like you could be doing more with your gift at this church? Um, do you think? Do you think that um, that this church? Well, I guess what's the word is giving you both the opportunities, uh, or um, you know how? Is there any way that you feel? What, what else can we be doing uh, in order for you to grow into your gift, I guess, is maybe a question. Because uh, the follow-up question is, does anyone think that the church we attend is ideal? And, uh, you know, I, I guess this is another one where, no, of course, if it's not ideal, there's room for improvement. Um, but, like, you know, obviously... Uh, the whole, the whole purpose of what we're doing here with the spiritual gifts is, um, you know, we want God to use us powerfully, and 
you know, the analogy that Paul gives with the church being the body of Christ and how everything fits together and everybody's doing their part and everybody, and everybody is supplying from what they've been given as a gift into the body and, and therefore the body grows. Um, so, you know, uh, it's probably unfair to expect that uh, during one little class we're just going to get everything figured out. <laughs> but, you know, um, we definitely want everyone to, to really start thinking about it, to really start praying and, and, and meditating to God about it. You know, God, like, what do you want me to do in this church? Like, what is my role? What is my purpose here? Because otherwise, you know, um, and it, this happens probably more often than you, than you would think. That, that people attend the church thinking that that's all they ever got to do. And, th and they'll waste away their entire life just going to a congregation, Sabbath after Sabbath after Sabbath, doing the same thing, <clears throat> never growing, <clears throat> you know, and then they die that way. And the, the whole time thinking that they were doing, they were just, you know, doing what they were supposed to do. And that's not, that is not uh, the way the church operates. You know, that is probably uh, a big misconception of what it means to be a Christian. You know, that uh, being a Christian just means you just got to keep coming to this church, or going to some church, attending some service, sing a little, hear a little, pray a little, go home. You know, that's, that's definitely not what we, get, what we want to get stuck doing at this church. Yes. So um, I watched a video on uh, Francis Chan, and he gave a little explanation on um, why he left his mega church. It's because he felt like he was just preaching, 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 and people were coming just to get fed, and then go home and, and you know do whatever they gonna do. But he said that um, he quit his mega church so that way he can start you know working on like smaller groups so that way he doesn't just preach and then like just so they can get fed and go away. No, but he can equip them so that they themselves can either become like pastors or get right. the spiritual gifts, mm -hmm. you know, to grow and to, you know, further the gospel and the kingdom of God. Yes. And so, yeah. Um, he said that he's scared, like from when he, a quote that he said is he's scared that some people that are going to his church that are in his congregation, uh -huh. he's scared that um, some of them might be going, you know, following the rules, doing whatever they need to do. And some of them still might be going to hell. Yeah. Because, you know, they haven't accepted Jesus Christ. Right. Further the gospel. Yeah. Uh, um, have you guys all seen Francis Chan on like, YouTube or, uh, or anything? A little bit. Yeah. Um, I think me, yeah, me and Robert went to go see him in person at a small church in uh, Los Gatos. And it was amazing to me that he's exactly the same way in real life as he is in those YouTube videos. Like, there's no difference. <laughs> And you, you sit there and you listen to him and, and he just takes you, he transports you to a, a different reality. Because he's just, you can just see it and it's like, like wow, you know, this guy is truly gifted by the Spirit. You know, because you're in his presence and, and you just see the Spirit of God working in this person. And that's beautiful. And, you know, it um, inspired me. That's, that's what I want to be that's where I want to I want to be able to teach or preach in such a manner where people have no doubt that God really is working not in me through me you know that's where I want to get and and I hope that's where you guys want to get you know, the way that you serve or the way that you evangelize or the way that you give that there's no other reason why you would be that way unless the Spirit of God was working in you that's what we that's what we want to that's what we want to get to. So, um, we, he says, working to its fullest capacity. Whose who's, uh, responsibility is it for you and I to be working at our full capacity? Whose responsibility is that? Is, he wrote, is this the pastor's responsibility? No. no. <laughs> okay. It has to be your will. Okay, just says it's our will. Okay. Um, hmm. I want to I want to go down that route. 
because that's, yeah, maybe that's what we think, right? That our will, we, uh, it is up to us whether we want to be working at our full capacity. Okay? So, I know this is a good time because then what, if it is up to us, then what is it that we have to will in order to make it happen? No, you just have to want to do more. You have to, uh, you have to, if it's not in your heart, if it's not in your heart to do it, then don't do it. If you mm -hmm. don't love what you're doing or anything, don't do it. That's my way. Somebody says, hey, can you help me with this chair? And I was like, I'm not going to do it with a joyful heart. They're like, yeah, brother, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> um, so what do you do if it's not in your heart? It's not your gift, brother. Oh, it's not your gift, okay. <laughs> All right. So, that's, no, but this is good because that means that th this will help you determine what is your gift. Um, what is it that you want to do in the church? And if your answer is nothing, then I want to bring attention to that and, and ask you, are you sure you've been born again? Because there's, there's no way a child of God <coughs> wants to do nothing in the body of Christ. So I, this is, you know, um, a lot of soul searching it's what you're going to have to do in order to determine what, you know. Um, let's see. Personal story. Um, I was baptized in uh, 1999. And um, before then, I hadn't really put any thought into what I was supposed to do. And I, I was still in that mentality that um, just having gotten baptized was all really God wanted for me. It's like, okay, I got baptized, you know, and cool, that's it, you know. Uh, now I just need to continue, keep on track, continue to go to church. And um, it wasn't until uh, a year and a half later, so when a year and a half, you know, with just not really putting much thought into it, not really doing anything, just attending church. And I came, I moved down here, and like all of a sudden, William, who was a pastor, he came up to me, he's like, I want you to preach. And, you know, I've never, I've never thought about preaching before, um, and I, it was something that was like terrifying to me, but I also didn't have the, you know, I guess, the courage to say, no, I'm not going to preach. Yeah, I just said, okay, fine, you know, I'll do it. And um, so um, I, you know, prepared myself as much as I could. I was paranoid that it was going to be a big fail, that I was just going to flop up there. And surprisingly, it, it went actually kind of well, and I got a lot of really good feedback. And so... Um, that's how I found out, or that's how the Spirit just kind of, you know, revealed to me that that's probably the gift. You know, because I don't know if I ever mentioned to you guys, in, in you know, uh, I have this reputation now that I'm like this nerd, right? Uh, that I know a lot or whatever, and I'm a computer guy. In, in high school, I was a slacker at best. I wasn't anything special. Me too. You know, um, I, I like I wasn't a smart kid, but uh, w once I got baptized and once I believe started believing, like yeah, I mean it's almost like everything changed for me. All of a sudden, I wanted to absorb as much knowledge as I as I could about everything. You know, about God, about just everything. And that's been the case ever since. You know, so something happens when God gives you a new heart. He, he gives you new desires. Um, and, it's, and it's for His sake. You know. So, um, here's the thought that he wrote. 
Could it be that if we all worked and used our gift to its full capacity, the church could function at its full capacity? Could it be that if we all worked and used our gift to its full capacity, the church would function at its full capacity? Yes. Okay. So, so what's stopping us? What's stopping us? I know it's warm in here. It's really warm in here. <laughs> You're not warm? No, it's cool. It's cool. Really? Yeah, I'm like a little sweaty. <laughs> and was like going away. <laughs> so, um, so what's stopping us? Why don't we work to our full capacity? Um, let's see. Uh, Robert. Let's see, well, you didn't say, but we said mercy and leadership. Um, and let's just assume those are your guests, and I would agree. Leadership is probably one of your guests. Um, what's stopping you from, from working at your full capacity? What comes to mind? Um, uh, well, there's a couple. I, I could think that maybe, not, maybe I'm not the only one to struggle with it, but... I think a lot of the times it's we don't really believe in ourselves that uh, we're we can that we're we're, we're worthy or we are uh, uh, capable. Uh, there's a lot of self doubt, and uh, I think it takes for us to even try and step into it. We have to have confidence that it's God who's calling us, and it's not because we're awesome. It's because of His grace on us. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's something that I'm learning that it's it's I, I don't I can't have confidence in me I have confidence that he's working in me uh, mm -hmm. and that changes my confidence off of my abilities and, and puts my faith in him to help mm -hmm. um, so yeah that one and then I think it's uh, I think it's just a matter of discipline putting putting the time into developing it and uh, really focusing on it uh-huh not, not, you know, I think we can get lost I know I I have experienced where you get kind of lost in all the other mundane tasks of life mm -hmm. and your future and, your, and you forget this is this is really what God's calling you to do mm -hmm. everything else he'll take care of yes exactly uh, that's a very good point uh, because, and not just with gifts, but almost with everything, um, we tend to look into ourselves. And we tend to be focused on ourselves as, as to what, um, uh, you know, whether you can get through what you're going through. You're looking to yourself. Uh, sometimes we look to ourselves to figure out, you know, uh, what we're going to do in life. Um, just just everything we have that natural tendency to look to ourselves um, and but with but with everything we we have to train ourselves to not look to ourselves like uh, the, um, you know and this is something that I'm uh, I, I'm beginning to grasp myself is that looking to Christ for everything looking to Christ looking to God you know get your eyes and your mind off of yourself and look to God you know, it's uh, yeah, Spurgeon explained it, it. You know, everybody can look somewhere else, right? Like if somebody tells you to look somewhere, all you gotta do is just shift your eyes. Now, now, try and think about that with your spiritual eyes. Okay, it is a shifting of your focus from yourself to God doing that spiritually for for whatever it is that that you are you know whatever gives you doubt whatever gives you fears whatever gives you uh uncertainty just with your spirit shift your focus from yourself to god uh, so that's one of the reasons why we don't because we feel in inadequate and truly we are inadequate there's no one here that is in themselves capable of what God wants us to do but if we learn to shift our spiritual eyes off of ourselves and to God you know that's one of that's that's going to be a huge step 
Because we're then we stop looking at ourselves at what we're naturally capable of, and and we start looking to Him. In order, f you know, it's an it, it's really an attitude change that happens when you start looking to Him and asking Him, you know, God, use me in whatever way you 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 want to use me. Um. So could it be that if we all worked and used our gift to its full capacity, the church would function at its full capacity? Uh, what's stopping us, then why don't we? Like, for example, Josh, you listed, um, I thought this was really interesting, you, you said you'd love to have the gift of tongues. Um, so, uh, if you would love to have the gift of tongues, how would you go about getting the gift of tongues? <laughs> because uh, for because this would help, um, huh? Because this would help that's speaking, those is, that is speaking all, all, as many languages. That that's speaking in a language that you never studied. You know whether whether that means angelic languages or human languages. You know, because uh, Paul, Paul wrote, "I thank God that I speak." more languages than you all you know that means I don't I have no idea how many languages he spoke but he must have spoken a lot of languages you know typically back in those days you knew a little Greek you knew a little Latin and Jews probably knew Hebrew so a lot of people were trilingual um, but you know how many other how many additional languages there was there was time like just dozens of other languages and Paul wrote you know I thank God that I that I speak in tongues more than you all but he said I'd rather speak in a tongue I'd rather speak one word that everybody understands than you know a whole like thousands of words that nobody understands but I, I look I pose this question because I think it would help those who don't know what their gift is um, find because it's the same process if you have a if you want a gift you don't have, it's the same process as not knowing what your gift is and finding out what your gift is. Right? How would you go about getting your gift of tongues if you really want it? Asking God. Asking God, exactly. Asking God. Right again, it's not looking to yourself. It's shifting your eyes to God. You know, for, for all the gifts that were listed, Mede, you said administration. You know, if that's a gift you really want, then you need to start praying and asking God, God, you know, I want to do, that's what I want to, to help with at church. You know, we, um, I know uh, Mari takes on a lot of responsibility as far as administration goes. Maybe you could be right next to maybe you could take a lot of the load off. Because sometimes it seems like she's going crazy trying to get it, trying to juggle everything. And she needs help, you know? And so maybe you would be her like right hand man, right hand girl or something, you know? <laughs> you know, seriously, like, could we have too many administrators at church? Probably no. The more that we want to do, the more administrators we're gonna need to get everything coordinated. Evangelist, you know? What, um, so again, this is all goes, goes back to working at our full potential. You know, Jesse, what do you need to to do in order to um, really be a, a, an evangelist? Is it that I need to do? Um, I think you just need to have the courage just uh -huh. to, um, you know, ignore um, what that what um, you're saying about that person, you know, oh, that person, you know, is in a sin, always oh, living out on the streets, always oh, dirty, always oh, this. No, and get out of that self and go talk to him and know that he is a child of God, uh -huh. that God has called to love him, and that he has a home here at the church that you need to break out of yourself and go talk to that person. Uh -huh. And stop seeing what you see about him, but see what God sees about him. Okay. And that will change out a lot of your perspective and how to evangelize to people, to talk to people. Yes. Okay, so we ran out of time, so I'm just going to read here what... Um, what Elmer wrote. Um, he says, you can tell him I wrote this part. <laughs> he says, maybe, maybe, you just don't care. Do you care? 
Or maybe you just don't even believe. That's, you know, that's kind of in your, in your face, like, do you actually believe, do you actually care about this stuff? Or, or are you just going through motions? You know, you're still here because, you know, your family expects it. You know, you don't want to just rile anybody up. You're just happy doing the same thing right now. And I hope that's not the case. Because the truth is, he says, there is no valid reason or excuse for you not to be uh, working to your full potential, working your spiritual gift. There's no excuse for it. Um, okay, so that's the end of it. Uh, let's all stand and, and uh, we'll end with prayer.